let's take a look at the power used by a resistor and Kirchhoff's laws. So we already kind of looked at the power that's used by a resistor. Um, we know that the power that's used is equal to the current through the resistor times the potential difference across the resistor. What's going to be new here is we're going to take that expression and we're going to mix it together with what is commonly called Ohm's law, even though it's not actually Ohm's law, um, but V equals IR or R equals V over I, depending on how you write it. Um, so let's say uh, power is equal to I times V. Well, we can replace V, the potential difference across the resistor, with the current through the resistor times the resistance of the resistor. So if we do that, the power that's used by a resistor is equal to the current through the resistor squared times the resistance of that resistor. We can also make a substitution in P equals IV and replace I. I is equal to V over R. And if we do that, we get that the power used by a resistor is equal to the potential difference across the resistor squared divided by the resistance of the resistor. And this can all be combined into a single expression that the power is equal to current times potential difference, which is equal to current squared times the resistance, which is equal to the potential difference squared divided by the resistance. And let's move on to Kirchhoff's laws. There are two laws. They are often called the junction rule and the loop rule. So the first law, or the junction rule, states that the current that goes into a junction has to equal the current coming out of a junction. Another way to say that is that the sum of all the currents at a junction has to equal zero. So let's think about this. First of all, what's a junction? A junction is just a point where wires come together. Um, simple as that. So if I draw this situation here, and let's say I have three amps flowing in from this direction and two amps flowing in from this direction and four amps flowing out from that direction and then an unknown current here. Kirchhoff's first law says that the current going in has to equal the current coming out. So let's apply it that way. Well, we got three amps going in and two amps going in and we got four amps coming out and then an unknown current here. So if we figure out the unknown current, well, it's got five amps going in in total. We have to have five amps coming out. So the missing current is one amp coming out. The thing to be most careful about when applying this junction rule, or Kirchhoff's first law, is the sign of the current. So just be mindful of that when you apply this law. The second law is also called the loop rule. And it states that the total of the potential differences in any complete loop has to be zero. This can be applied to any loop in any circuit. So when you're solving problems with this, sometimes it will be obvious which loop to choose, and sometimes it won't. And that's part of the art of solving these problems. The other thing about applying this is that it depends on which direction you go around the loop. When you go around the loop, if you go from the negative terminal of the battery to the positive terminal of the battery, you have a positive potential difference across that battery. Whereas if you went the other way, you'd have a negative potential difference across that battery. Also, if you go across a resistor with the current, then you will have a negative potential difference. If you go across a resistor against the current, you will have a positive potential difference. So let's apply that to a certain situation. Let's say we have an EMF of 9 volts from a battery and we have three resistors and the potential difference across the first resistor is 5 volts across the second resistor it's 1 volt and we don't know the potential difference across the third resistor. Well we gotta choose a loop. It's pretty obvious which loop we're gonna use there's just one loop but we do have to pick which direction we're gonna travel through the loop. So let's go with the current. Let's go through the loop this direction uh, clockwise. If we do that we start Let's start right here at this point. Well, the first thing I'm going to do if I go through the loop is I'm going to go across the battery. And I go across the battery with the current from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. So I gain potential difference. My potential difference is positive when I go across the battery this way. So let's see, that's 9 volts of positive potential difference. Then I go across the first resistor. I go across the first resistor with the current. So my potential difference is going to go down. So, I have 9 volts from the battery, 
plus negative 5 volts from the first resistor. Then I go across the second resistor and I go with the current, so my potential difference goes down by 1 volt. So I now have 9 volts plus negative 5 volts plus negative 1 volt plus my unknown potential difference. And those all have to add up to zero. So if I solve for my unknown potential difference, I'll get negative 3 volts, which means that my potential difference would decrease by 3 volts when I went across this resistor with the current. Let's revisit the two laws real quick. So that first law, the junction rule, it says that the current going into the junction has to equal the current coming out of the junction. That's really a consequence of conservation of charge. Because what we're saying is that if we have a flow of charge going into a point, then we have to have the same flow of charge coming out of the point. If we didn't, if we had more charge flowing in than out, then charge would be being destroyed at this junction. And if we had more charge flowing out than in, then charge would be being created at this point. And that's not possible. You can't create or destroy charge. So really, the first law comes from conservation of charge. The second law, the loop rule, it comes from conservation of energy. Because what it's saying, and we won't go through the whole explanation of this, but what it's saying is that the energy that comes into the circuit has to equal the energy coming out of the circuit. So think about it this way. What puts energy into the circuit? Well, that's the battery or the electrical cell. That's the source. So something's putting energy in, and that's that source. That has to equal the energy that leaves the circuit. And the thing that causes energy to leave the circuit are the things like light bulbs and heaters. The resistors cause energy to leave the circuit. So another way to think about the loop rule is it's saying that the energy that goes into the circuit from the source has to equal the energy that goes out through all the resistors. And if you had more energy going in than coming out, then the circuit would be destroying energy somehow. And if you had less energy going in and more energy coming out, then the circuit would be creating energy in some way. And you can't do that because of the conservation of energy.